In today's video, I'm going to show you the back issues that I brought home from two local shops. And the stack has got a bunch of things in it here. I've got everything from a number one. I've got some books that I've never seen before, so I decided to bring them home. I was able to make some good progress on a couple volumes that I'm trying to build out. I've got a couple books that uh, were just strictly cover buys. I've even got a minor key from the Bronze Age, but I'll save that one till last. The best part of all, though, was I got all of these books for less than a dollar a piece. Check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. I've got back issues from two different stores to show you today. One stack, this first stack, comes from a store in St. Paul called Midway Books. They're primarily a rare and antique bookstore, and they also carry comic books. And what's really nice about that for a comic collector and reader is that when it's advertised first and foremost as an antique and a rare bookstore, most people aren't going to be thinking of going there for comic books as a primary source. So you can find some things that maybe have been picked over at other traditional comic book stores, but Midway Books does carry new comics, they have back issues, and my favorite part that I just discovered less than a year ago is that they have a downstairs with discounted books, including comic books, about 20 long boxes of randomly assorted comics from the modern age to bronze age. Most of them are raw, like you see, no bag or board. Some of them are bagged and boarded, and I've found some fun books down there, including building out some uh, issues of runs I'm working on and then finding some never before seen comics, at least never seen by me. And you'll get a few examples of that from this haul today. And that's the, those are the books we're going to start with. Kicking things off here is this copy of Exiles number one. This is from volume two of this title and never seen it before. I was familiar with volume one, and I see those in the back issue bins all the time. And I'm familiar with volume three, the most recent run. And specifically, I had picked up issue three from that um, volume three because of the cover appearance there and first appearance of Peggy Carter as Captain America. I didn't get it because it was a key. I got it because I thought the cover looked cool, and then it turned into a key, so it's fun to be able to find keys that way because then you're not paying up for it. But I'd never heard of this volume two, and when I saw this cover, I was really drawn to it. It's got kind of a cartoony style, and I mean that in a good way, and it features, I, I believe, the traditional multiversal cast of characters. And as you look through here, like I said, cartoony kind of style, but it only ran for six issues. And I thought that'd be a fun, a fun series to look for. I like these sketches at the back. It gives you an idea of some of the cast in the book. So you got Beast. He kind of reminds me of Dark Beast from Age of Apocalypse. And then Polaris. The Witch or Scarlet Witch. Forge, one of my favorite X-Men. And then Black Panther or The Panther. So fun to be able to find this first issue of a series I had never seen before, or I should say maybe a volume I've never seen before. And now I'll continue to work on the remaining five issues. Two more books that I have never seen or heard of before from this limited series called X-Men Ronin. Got issues three and four. I don't know anything about the story or what's going on in these issues, but it's this manga kind of a style. Maybe anime style. It's not manga because it still reads left to right. But you get these really different kind of character designs for your X-Men. I mean, look at Cyclops. That's, that's kind of weird looking. I don't love Cyclops' design. I will be totally honest with you there. The storm looks pretty cool. I'm guessing that's Jean Grey in there. But I, it's it's a nice animation style. There's Iceman. And it, like I said, 50 cents a piece when it's something brand new like that that I've never seen. Sure, I'll pick that up. I've never seen it before, so I don't know that I'll ever find issues one, two, and five. But 
For now, it's a fun little pickup at 50 cents a pop. Got this copy of Marvel Fanfare, really just because it's issue 60, which is, as the title says, the final issue of Marvel Fanfare. I know some of you who watch my channel are working on or have worked on completing this entire run. This is not a run that I'm currently working on, but I have occasionally picked up the single issue here or there if I was drawn to the cover. And I like final issues of runs as well as number ones and number twos, things like that. But it's got a cool cover with Black Panther. And then on the back, you've got Daredevil. And it's got a little bit of a little bit of crustiness going on here, but again, it was just a fun pickup to have that final issue of the volume for 50 cents. I've been telling you how I've been working on this volume of Superman Batman that ran for 87 issues, and Midway had a couple more that I needed. I've got issues 26 and 30 that were in good shape. They may have had more, but I am trying to still be somewhat picky, even at 50 cents a piece, because if it's something I want to add to my collection, if it's something I know I could find somewhere else in a dollar bin, I'm not going to buy it just because it's 50 cents. I want it to be in good shape as well. So if it was really messed up, creases, lots of spine ticks, things like that, I would have left those issues behind. So I, I am selective even at 50 cents a piece. Got one more issue of Cyber Force that I've been working on. This is from Volume 1, one of the early image titles that I've been going back and trying to build out. So happy to find that. Also got one more issue of this five-issue series called Gen X. The story looks at what would happen if the X-Men aged in real time. So I think what you're looking at in Gen X is the next generation of X-Men heroes. And probably most of them are kids of the original X-Men characters. Written by Chris Claremont, and that seemed like an intriguing story. I only recently came across the first issue of this at another store. And so now I have issues one and three and just a few more to go. Last two issues from Midway. These are examples of books that, when they're 50 cents a piece, if they look fun to me and just grab my eye, then I'll probably pick them up. I really don't know anything about Death's Head, the character, haven't read any of his uh, stories historically, but I just loved these covers, especially this one here on number five. These are from 1989 and they come from the Marvel UK press. And like I said, it was eye-catching, and so I figured I would grab those pretty easily at 50 cents a piece. All right, that does it for the books that I picked up at Midway. The rest of these books now come from the comic book store called Comic Book College. They are the oldest comic book store in Minnesota, and they pretty regularly have a great selection of 50 cent and dollar books. The books I'm gonna show you today, there are 15. I know there are 15 because of the deal that they often run with their dollar books. And that is books are a dollar a piece, but if you buy 15, it's only $10. So you're gonna get them for like 66 cents a piece. So whenever I go, if I get close to that $10 mark with finding books or finding 10 books, then I'll just push it all the way to 15 because really those last five you're gonna get for free because of that discount. So it's a great way to not only get dollar books, but then even save some more when you can find some extra books and, and build out some runs. And I was able to build out at least one good run and got a fun little key that I'll save for last. But let's go ahead and look at these books from Comic Book College. This first one here is just a fun grab. Never seen it before. It's a, probably was a freebie back in 2000 when it came out called Genesis or X-Men Revolution Genesis Edition. What this does is give an intro to some changes that were happening in the X-Men lineup at the time. 
they were getting ready to shake up the creative teams on books like Uncanny X-Men, X-Men, X-Force, uh, X-Man, and Generation X. And so they wanted to introduce us to those new creative teams with this booklet here. And, you know, Chris Claremont was going back to Uncanny X-Men and X-Men. X-Men was going to be penciled by Lionel Yu. You had Will Sportacio in here. And I like these little freebies just because it's fun to look through and see some of this sketch work and see some of these changes, you know, freebies that you could have picked up in the uh, comic book store back in the day. But I was not collecting comics in 2000, so I would not have grabbed this. Kind of an interesting historical note now to highlight that's different from today is that when they made these creative changes to the teams that were working on the books, they did not renumber the volumes. So when Chris Claremont came back to Uncanny X-Men, he started again in issue 381. They didn't reset with a new number one. Similarly, the uh, this X-Men book where I guess is he is he doing the one yeah where Lionel Yu is doing the pencils and Chris Claremont was writing that was issue 100 and similarly with X-Force X-Man Generation X they didn't renumber any of those which you don't really see that these days anytime they change a creative team the philosophy or the approach is reset with a new number one so I kind of miss these days I see why they do it with a new number one but you know, I'm, I'm kind of torn. I still like the idea of being able to collect everything, you know, in one volume, even as creative teams change. But let me know your thoughts on that down below. And how do you like that old approach or do you like the, the new approach that the way they do things today better? This is the run I said I was able to make some good progress on. I have been working on Fantastic Four Volume 3 which started out with this title of Heroes Return. To give you the context, after Volume 2 ended, which was Heroes Reborn, that was when Marvel outsourced the editorial duties to folks at Image like Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee. When they brought all those heroes back to the main Marvel Universe, everything started over with a new number one. And ironic that this is even earlier than that 2000 and everything's rebooting now. But anyway, who knows? <laughs> consistency, right? We, we're, we shouldn't really be looking for it across the industry over decades. But these all restarted with a new number one, and it was called Heroes Return, celebrating their return to the main Marvel Universe. But as I've been working on that, uh, I got several issues today. Got issue three, four, 13. Jumping ahead, here's 37. 38. 39, 40, 42, and 45. So that was nice progress on that Fantastic Four Volume 3 at just 66 cents a piece. I was able to find a couple more issues of Wildcats Volume 1 from the early Image days. Working on the first like 18 or 20 issues of this volume, building on from the you know first two or three that I purchased when they first came out back in the 90s. And I got issues 12 and 14. Is this guy's name Maul? Something like that? Something with an M. It's a cool looking cover. Coming back to some Superman Batman, found those two issues I showed you at Midway Books, but then I also found two issues at Comic Book College. Got number 34, and then the big 50th issue. And I think at this point, I'm about halfway there to having all of the issues of this 87 issue run. And you know, in my last video, I talked about if I could find all 87 issues for a dollar a piece, then I'd only spend $87 on the total volume. But I know that's the most I'll spend because I've got plenty of instances like what I'm showing you today where the first two books I showed you, I got at 50 cents a piece and these two I got for 66 cents a piece. So there's four of those issues that were even less than a dollar. So 
just a great cheap way to be able to put a volume together. All right, one more book to show you. And from a, a key perspective, and even from a character perspective, it was kind of my favorite find uh, from both of these stores. This is Star Slayer number three from 1982. Um, what makes this issue significant is that it's the second appearance of the Rocketeer. So I'll go ahead and show you, and not just on the back cover there. But you've got this main story, Star Slayer, the log of the Jolly Roger. Written and illustrated by Mike Grell. This is not the Rocketeer, but I just think that's a great two-page splash. But you go through here. This is the main story, which actually kind of seems interesting in itself. You go to the back, and this backup story is the Rocketeer, and you can see this is chapter two because this is his second appearance. Issue two had the first appearance. I've not really read any Rocketeer comic books, but... I am very familiar with a Disney movie that came out in the 90s and thought that was fantastic. I've seen that several times. And I've heard now and again that they talk about doing a Disney Plus series, which I think would be great. I would love to see this done as a series to kind of continue to follow his adventures. And IDW is publishing the, uh, the, uh, the Rocketeer comics that we see today. But that was a a really nice surprise to find in the dollar bins to get his second appearance. Still would love to find his first appearance someday, but maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I won't. For now, I'm very happy to have found his second appearance here. And that's the last book I've got from Comic Book College. All right, that's going to do it for me. And that's going to wrap up this back issue haul, showing you the books I picked up from Midway Books and Comic Book College. But what about you? What kinds of things have you been finding in your own comic book adventures recently? Let me know down below. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand-selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.